The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Welcome everyone to our daily doctrinal Bible study through the Vic Palbido Evangelistic Ministry. So, <clears throat> we start right away. For you, believer, use the principle of 1 John 1, 9. For you, unbeliever, it is faith alone in Christ alone. We are going to continue our study on uh, how to go to heaven the Bible way. Okay, you see, it is attitude towards the Lord Jesus Christ that determines one's eternal future. So, it is every person's responsibility to appropriate Christ as his Savior since doing so is tantamount to responding positively to God's stimulus for every human being to respond. God's Word in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 says, If you truly seek me, you will find me. Now, May I ask you, how did you become a member of your human family? The answer is, by birth. In the same way, in the spiritual realm, you become a member of God's family also by birth. Correct? Why? Because believing in Christ is the process of the second birth, regeneration, or being born again. God's Word says, Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. This particular verse talks about spiritual birth. You see, salvation means a rescue. Rescue from where? A rescue from man's deplorable, miserable state which is total separation from God, because man is a sinner. As Romans chapter 3, verse 23 declares, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, not even one. Romans 3, 10. For the wages of sin is death, spiritual death, from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 Romans 5.19a also says, For as through the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as through one man, Adam, Sin entered into the world, and spiritual death through sin, and so death spread to all men, passed on to the progeny of Adam, because all sinned in Adam. You see, we are spiritually dead, powerless to approach God on our own an impassable and insurmountable barrier confines us from the fall of Adam until the end of time no human being can escape the barrier because of Adam's decision to sin the justice of God erected the barrier so that was erected only God can eliminate it. No human effort can release us from our prison. No matter what our talents, 
abilities, ethics, conduct, assets, or any other factor, we are helpless. We exist behind the barrier, alienated from God. Apart from divine intervention, we all face condemnation and eternal separation from God. The fact that this barrier exists is bad news. By one act of disobedience, man was trapped behind the barrier and became enslaved to a nature of sin. But through the saving work of Jesus Christ on the cross, God opened a way through the barrier to provide freedom from the slave market of sin. This is the gospel. Very good news. Now, because man's problem is separation from God, there is only one remedy, the cross. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all. 1 Timothy 2, 5, and 6. But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Man's response should be to believe in Christ. John 3, 18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Revelation 20.15 says, And if anyone's name was not found written in the Lamb's book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Now you can read also 1 John 4.15, which says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Question. What is the worst kind to die? The answer is, to die as an unbeliever. A person who rejects the gospel is actually making God a liar. In fact, a person who rejects Christ as Savior is committing the unpardonable sin. Read Matthew 12, 31 to 32. God's word says, It is better off for an unbeliever to have never been born. Unbelievers are eternal losers. And all rejections of truth is arrogance. But man has no excuse. He might say, I did not know God because nobody ever told me. That's why I should not be sent to the lake of fire. But let this man read Romans 1, 18 to 20. Now let me read to you verse 18. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Verse 19 says, What may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. Verse 20, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Now, if a person insists to reject Christ as Savior, God has already prepared a funeral plan for him. That's why in the Old Testament, Nicodemus, the religious leader of his time, a high priest, a very, very religious person, self-righteous, sweet and gentle person, was told by our Lord, 
unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. You see, some of the nicest people, very lovable, admirable, sweet, gentle people are unbelievers. If you ask these religious people if they are sure of going to heaven, do you know what they're going to answer you? Only God knows. What a tragedy. These people are making God a what? A liar. As an unbeliever, you are then without Christ, right? As an unbeliever, you are without eternal life. As an unbeliever, you are totally separated from God. That means you are spiritually dead. In Romans 8, 9, second part, it says of you, unbeliever, he, the unbeliever, does not belong to Christ. In Jude chapter 19, he, the unbeliever, does not have the Holy Spirit. An unbeliever is a person who is choosing an endless nightmare. Do you know why? Because he spurns the one who suffered untold agony on the cross as his substitute. And this negative decision of his, not to, not to believe in Christ, has appalling consequences. The alternative? The lake of fire. The final destination of the devil and his angels, God's garbage dump. Matthew 25, 41. The lake of fire is otherwise known in the Bible as the second death. Revelation 20, verse 14. If you try to glimpse into the torment and hopelessness for the unbeliever, Try to read Revelation 20, verse 10. And it says, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire, lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet has been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, also in Revelation 20, verse 15, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Since the unbeliever's name cannot be found written in the Lamb's book of life, then he is to be thrown and cast into the lake of fire. In the lake of fire, there is a horrible future. There is total darkness forever. There is eternal loneliness. There is eternal unhappiness. There is eternal frustrations, eternal exasperation or anger, eternal suffering for all eternity. No chance of escape whatsoever. That is the lake of fire. The wrath of God, as described in the second part of John 3, 36, he who believes in the Son has eternal life. But he who rejects the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That is why the worst kind to die is to die as an unbeliever. But after all, it's a matter of choice. Man is always a product of his decision. He is the only one responsible, answerable, and accountable for his decision. Because you see, salvation is a gift to be received, not a goal to be achieved. We will continue this study tomorrow.